Well, welcome back to this, our third part in this multi-part series, God's Anti-Deception Toolkit. And in the first segment we talked about, we're talking about strategies to help you gain discernment and recognize when and why the enemy wants to deceive you. So in the first segment, we said that truth is a person. We said that uh, the truth of Jesus Christ helps us understand the way we need to go, the where truth is and where the deception is and the life God is trying to lead us into. We also realized in the second segment that the starting place for eliminating all deception was the word of God. And we reckon that came from John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth. The truth is Jesus and the truth, Jesus shall make you free. He is the God of all liberty and all freedom. Okay. So in this segment, we start in the last segment, we ended talking about strategies to recognize when you are being deceived, deceived and the source of that deception. We said that a spirit of mocking is a clue that someone is trying to deceive you, that a spirit of pride is a clue. It is the root of all deception and it is a sign that someone is trying to deceive you. We closed out with that passage in Jeremiah 49, 16. You have been deceived by the fear you inspire in others and by your own pride. You live in a rock fortress and control the mountain heights, but even if you make your nest among the peaks with the evil eagles, I will bring you crashing down, says the Lord. That's Jeremiah 49, 16. And all pride will ultimately be brought down. So we are here we are in the third segment, and we're going to talk about we're talking about continuing strategies so that you can overcome deception and recognize when you're being deceived and what countermeasures you need to take to avoid the enemy from deception. Now remember, what is deception? Deception is to separate you from. It is intended to separate you from that which you need to establish a path you need to take, a decision you need to make. If the enemy can deceive you, then he can also get us in fear. If he can get us in fear, he can stop us from achieving and accomplishing what God has intended us to do. Now that is significant because in this last sliver of time, time is closing out and we're just about to step into the eternal realm. Time is like a capsule inside eternity and time is coming to a close. And so in this last window of time, there are two kingdoms that both have an agenda. There is the kingdom of God's dear son and there is the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of God's dear son is the father, the son and the Holy Ghost. That's God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And the kingdom of darkness is Satan the Antichrist and the spirit of the Antichrist. That, and that is everything that is against Christ. That is a spirit whose goal is to move completely opposite of the spirit of Christ. Now, both of those forces are clashing. They're fighting. And caught in the middle of these two forces is the United States of America. What happens in the United States will help tip the scales. We're at a tipping point because what happens here will tip the scales into the direction of one or the other. And that's why all you see all of this drama with the election. You've got one scale that on one side, you've got one saying, we want to open up the nation, open up the economy, and we want to get people back in school, keep people in work, and keep people working. And on the other side, we said, we got a dark winter coming. We're going to shut down schools, the pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. And so we're going to close it. We're going to shut it down. When you close it, what happens? Nobody goes to work. Nobody goes to school. Businesses die. The businesses that survive the first wave of the closures will die. When those businesses die, that forces the whole nation to become dependent dependent on a governmental entity and when that governmental entity takes control it's going to say to you now you know okay so if you want us to help you with some food go get your shot if you want us to help you with some money so you can pay your rent go get your shot oh oh you know no you can't go to church no that's what's happening and that's where we are we are in between these two clashes on this side the side of the kingdom god is saying look i told you that my son was going to come again i'm going to send him back to connect connect Collect my church. I'm going to collect the ones who I describe in scriptures as the elect. And their assignment, while you've got the Antichrist perpetuating a pandemic of fear, a deception agenda, you've got the kingdom agenda perpetuating a gospel message that is healing, that God and Jesus is coming back. God is about to shift, you know, because ultimately he is in, he is in authority, okay? 
God, God, he, he is the one who orchestrates all of this. Satan is not equal to God. It's, it's, it don't work that way. Okay. So now we understand. So in between is you and I, and we have to be able to distinguish between these two. And it's very important to know when someone is lying to you and how you can recognize the father of lies and how you can recognize the spirit of truth. There is the father of lies perpetuating deception and the spirit of truth trying to lead you into all truth. And we have to know how to distinguish one. And here's the beauty of it is you get to choose. By faith, you frame the world that you're going to live in by choosing which side you're going to be on. By choosing, well, what are the characteristics of the kingdom of light? What are the characteristics of the kingdom of darkness? On darkness, you've got a dark winter. On light, you've got in him was the light, and the light was the life, was the illumination, the, 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 the thing inside of you, the spirit of the living God, that shows you how to overcome every, everything difficult that you're experiencing. And so here are some uh, here are a couple of other techniques and tools <clears throat> to help us avoid deception. Deception is always going to be rooted in hate. A nature of deception, because deception flows from the dark side, one of the key characteristics of the dark side is the spirit of hate. It's the spirit of anger, bitterness, hatred, um, and it is evil. It is mean. It is, it is unkind. It is the complete opposite of what God describes as his nature, and he gave them a label called the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, mercy, temperance, um, uh, and, and there are nine of them. Okay. I, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head right now, but that's the nature of God. It describes who he is. The antichrist or the spirit of darkness or the spirit of deception is the opposite of that. So on this side, you've got love. On this side, you've got hate. On this side, you've got light. On this side, you've got darkness. On this side, you've got open the economy. Businesses live because in him was life. Okay. And then on this side, close the economy. What happens to the businesses? They all die. You will never go back to having a middle America, a middle economy again. It won't happen. We will close out the way the enemy has strategized this is to close out this last season to shut down everything, to close off, to eliminate income, to eliminate people's resources, to eliminate property ownership so that you will step into a communistic society and we will eliminate the America that we have known will go. It will fade to black and it will cease to exist. That's what the enemy, that's the dark side's agenda. And if you do a little bit of homework, you will find it there. You will see it. It's not, it's not hidden. It's not, it's very open. It's very exposed. You just have to connect the dots. Okay. But on the other side, the deception that is rooted in love, the light and the righteousness of truth is, it, it, decep deception is rooted in hate. The light is rooted in love. So what you're going to do is look for the love. Look for the, and what, how do you find it? Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So you're going to look for people who are walking in the light of the truth, who are walking in righteousness, who are walking in integrity, who are walking in honor. And you, and so you look, so if you see something that is deceitful, hidden, the hidden things of dishonesty, then you automatically know that's the dark side. Secrets. God does not do secrets. Secrets. God is open. He is honest. He is transparent. He doesn't do secrets. Okay. Jesus said to them, this is John 8, 42. If God were your father, you would love me for I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me by this. All will know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. And so when you go on social media and if you see someone attacking, you see one, one person who one ministry, and then they're attacking another ministry. That is not the nature of God. And so that lets you know that individual is operating from the dark side because the light of life will always move in love. It'll always end in exchange with words of kindness, grace, and peace. It'll always end in exchange with a blessing. It will always end in exchange with goodness, with mercy, with grace. That's how you know whether you're on the light side or you're on the dark side, whether you're over here with the God and Jesus and Holy Spirit, or whether you're over here with Satan, Antichrist, and the Antichrist spirit. That that's how you distinguish it. Look for the love. Here's the next one, the next strategy to determine if you are being deceived. Try the spirits. This is point number 10 in my outline. 
I guess I could make this available to y'all. If y'all want, well, I, okay, I'll, I'll go there. I'll cover that later. Try the spirits. There is a passage in 1 John 4, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to read it. It says, Beloved, don't believe every spirit, but try or test the spirits to see whether they are of God, because this is how you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of antichrist. Now let's break that down. How do you know? This is a test that you can use to discern if the people are com that you are engaging with are com or if they're if they're if what side they're on. He says if they are, try the spirits to see if they are of God. See if they came from the side of light. This is how you test it. Any spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. In other words, any time and this is a, a practice that I make to keep myself in check. I will consistently decree and state the Lordship of Christ. What does that look like? This is what that looks like, Donna. Hi, Donna Marie. Thank you for being on here. I appreciate you. Um, this is what that looks like. I will say, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I decree right now that you, I decree your Lordship over my words, over my thoughts, over my heart. I yield my thoughts, my hearts, and my words to you, Holy Spirit. I surrender that to you. I say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he was born of a virgin. He and, and I will do this periodically. Why? Because that establishes the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And what you will find is that a person operating from the demonic realm cannot state that fact. They can't say it. I saw this in reality in a circumstance. And so here's a way that you can begin to discern when people, what they're, what spirit they're operating through. If there is an exchange, you stop and say, you know what? I'm not going to get into an argument here. Let's just stop. Let's pause right now and let's put our, our disagreement on the table. And what we're going to do right now is decree the Lordship of Jesus, Jesus Christ. I'm just going to say, Lord Jesus, I just surrender my opinion, my thoughts, and my heart to you. And I decree that you are are Lord over my heart. You are Lord over my thoughts. You are Lord over my behaviors. And right now I acknowledge you as Lord. I confess that you are the son of God. I confess that you were raised from the dead on the third day that you died on the cross for me and you were raised for me. I decree that I speak it out loud. And then you tell the other person, say, okay, now I've established the Lordship of Jesus in this conversation. Can you do the same thing? Let's just do it together. And see what happens. That is a test that you can employ to determine which side they're operating from. Are they on the light where the kingdom of God is? Or are they operating from the darkness where, the, where Satan and his cohorts are? Here's another one. Number 11. Here's a strategy to determine which side. Oh, man, I'm running out of time. I got to hurry up. Which side they're operating. You got to check the fruit. Check the fruit. And see, this is something that's really important that people need to, even when you're looking at administrations, people say, well, you know, I don't, li I don't like, I don't like Donald Trump. I don't like this. I don't, well, stop, forget Donald Trump. What is his fruit? What has he done? What has he accomplished for the nation? Look at B Joe Biden's fruit. What has he done? What has he accomplished? Look at the fruit. Don't look at the tree. Look at the fruit. Because the fruit will tell you what kind of tree it is. The fruit will tell you how productive it is. And the fruit will tell you what is being produced. So he says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravaging wolves. You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Now, if on the one hand you are praying and asking God, God, I want you to save my business, grow my business, help my business. And then you partner with a person who says, no, we're going to shut all the businesses down. We're going to close them. We're not. You got to determine which fruit, what kind of fruit do you want? Do you want fruit of life or do you want fruit of you got, you see how this works? Check the fruit. That's Matthew seven verses 15 through 19. Uh, number 12, watch the patterns. These are, these are anti-deception tools. Watch the patterns. 
and this is Revelations 2, 1 through 3, it says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works. I know what you've done in the past. I know your labor. I know how you work. I know your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, and you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. There is a pattern of behavior. There are some people who say, well, you know, you know, that the, they said that the prophets had prophesied that this was what was going to happen. And they ain't, ain't no, no, you know, just watch, keep watching the fruit. If you look at those prophets, look at the prop, the prophecies that they've made in the past. Do you see a pattern of lies? Do you see a pattern of, in, of, of unfulfilled prophecies? I'm telling you, go look at Kim Clement and see what the patterns are. Don't worry about the prophet. Look at the pattern. Because if you can recognize the pattern, you can recognize the fruit. If you can recognize the fruit, you can test the spirit. If you can test the spirit, you can walk in the knowledge of life. You won't be deceived. Here's the last thing I've got to say. We're going to wrap this up. Deception is a choice. You have to choose. You can choose to be deceived or you can choose to walk in the light. You can choose to say, well, even though I want my businesses to thrive and I go, I'm going to go over here and vote this way. I'm going to go over here and, you know, the voting is over. But you got to understand this is how that works. If you say on this one side, you choose in life, but then you go and act in alignment and in agreement with darkness, you're not going to, that's double minded and a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways and they will be fooling themselves if they think they're going to get anything from God. Okay? Deception is a choice. We choose to be deceived. We choose to separate ourselves from the word of God. We choose not to walk in the light of that word. You choose to walk in the light and be a companion of light. Okay? When you reject life, life, L-I-F-E, light, L-I-G-H-T, and Christ, you invite darkness because when the light goes out, who moves in? The darkness does. You invite darkness, you invite death, and you invite deception. When you reject the light of the word, the light of Christ, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are thereby inviting a spirit of death. Satan says, I am come that you might have. Uh, Satan says he, is the, he comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. That's his agenda. That's his agenda, Donna. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So when you reject, I am come that you might have life, okay? When you reject that, you invite darkness. Last passage I'm going to share. It says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom? Don't be deceived. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. You get to choose not to be deceived. God thinks this is so important. He said it about, about five times. 1 Corinthians 5, 30, 5, 15, 33 says, Don't be deceived. Evil com company corrupts good habits. He says it again, Galatians 6 and 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. James 1, 16 through 7 says, Do not be deceived, my brethren. He says, don't be deceived. God keeps repeating himself. Don't be, don't be deceived, which means we can choose to be deceived by rejecting the word, by rejecting light, L-I-G-H-T, by rejecting life, L-I-F-E, by rejecting truth. That is who is truth? Jesus. So we started this program today. We started out by saying there is only one way that you can, with of certainty, always walk on the side of truth. Truth is a person, and all deception is designed and designated to separate you from that truth. I am out of time. I'm going to stop right there. I want to say thank you guys for sticking out here with me. This three-part segment, this is part three of three parts, God's Anti-Deception Toolkit. It is a resource to help you recognize when the enemy is trying to deceive you and to show you what you can do about it and how to discern the truth. Thank you for being on here with us today. And until next time, you make it a terrific day. Bye-bye.